Thanks for being here, everybody. It's going to be fun. Yeah, so today is about really harnessing your natural curiosity. It's something I've been studying really for the last 11 years. Um, it's interesting. You know, everyone today is talking about following your passion. And how many of you, uh, how many of you are doing that today? Nice. Um, and this is just something I love doing. Um, I think that's wrong. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't say that. Um, you should absolutely love what you do, but I, it's the notion of how do I find what I should do? To me, I don't believe you should figure out what you should do in life, your life's work, based on your passion. So to me, you shouldn't use that for your search criteria, in essence. Because that's why a lot of people struggle trying to figure out what they should do is say, okay, what do I love and can I make money at it? And I think that's the wrong way to go about it because, for example, I love sports, but I wasn't that great at it. So, well, so do I go next down on the list then and say, well, okay, what else do I love and can I make money at that? And I think that's why a lot of people struggle. So, of course you should love what you do. But I think it's the search criteria is where we make the mistake when people tell us to follow our passion. Uh, even uh, Casanova said that curiosity, <laughs> uh, you know, that love is really about curiosity. And I, I truly believe that. Um, and it was really after reading a lot about things like this that I tr have come to believe that finding your life's work is really truly like finding a soulmate. And that they both should stir really a profound and passionate curiosity inside you. That it's really like a childlike sense of wonder for your life that really you're, you're looking for answers. You're always questioning about them, learning from them, with them, and for them. And this came after really both personally, relationships, <laughs> and, and professionally. Because to me, if you stop, when we first meet someone as an example, the excitement of meeting them, getting to know them, learning all about them, learning from them, with them, for them, that's fun. It's the new experiences, it's the learning. But what happens when that fades? Do you like just being with them? If you're not really interested in them? It's the same for the work. And I found this years ago when, you know, it's excitement of starting a new business. That's fun and being with new people and that's exciting and we think that's passion and that's really exciting. But it's, it's the new customers and new products. But that newness can wear off. Because I found that that's not really where our passionate curiosity lies, which is different. So passion to me is just the act of doing something you love or being with somebody you love. That's just the heart. But we leave out the head, we leave out our intelligence, our genius, when we just go after something about the heart. And this hit me years ago when I realized, when I, when I read a quote from, from Einstein, that he said, I have no special talent. How many of you have seen this quote? I'm only passionately curious. I thought, well, that's interesting. It's true, he doesn't have a special talent. He's a mathematician, that's not a, a physicist, that's not a special talent, it's a talent. But he is passionately curious. He never stopped being curious. And it made me really think, and I started on this track, and I've been studying curiosity now for about 11 years, and I've realized that we've sadly overlooked its value to humanity, and actually for ourselves, and our own natural curiosity, our own sense of wonder. And I realized it's because most of us lost it as a kid. that our schools really repressed it. That when we're little kids, we all have that sense of wonder. But what they say to us, and they said to me basically, they inferred to me, they didn't say it. They said, Tommy, stop asking those questions. These are the ones that are more important. This math, this history, this science, right? But I was like, I just don't find that interesting. And they called me lazy, right? Right? But I was absolutely curious as a child. I wanted to learn. I just didn't want to learn that. I had other questions. But they didn't ask me what I wanted to learn. But of course I did. So what happens to us is as each year goes by, there's more and more pressure on us to learn the things that they think is more important. And for a kid like me, I'm just like, 
really? So I had to work harder and harder and more pressure and more pressure. And as you get older, what happens is then you have teenage years and that pressure and fitting in. They may be getting jobs, more pressure, then the pressure of school, right? Boyfriends, girlfriends, jobs. Should I go to college? Am I going to college? What happens to most kids, most kids, the vast majority around the world, not the one percenters, not the two percenters, but even those, our childlike sense of wonder turns into worry, which is a very different thing from a sense of wonder. One's incredibly positive, one's incredibly negative, right? And a lot of us get caught up spinning our wheels on worry instead of wonder. So it's there I kind of started, and I wanted to research curiosity. And what I realized is, yeah, it's the desire to learn. How many of you have kids in the room? Okay. And as babies, that's what they do. They kind of look up and they, they want to figure out. That's how we discover the world around us. That's how we make sense of the world. It's like human nature's carrot that's like enticing us to reach out and go, what's that? And then we get out of the crib and we play with blocks. We say, hey, what's that? And then I pick it up and throw it at my brother to see if he'll scream. <laughs> But that's what curiosity, we're trying to make sense of the world, and that's why it's there. But, and I think everyone knows that, but we've overlooked the value of that. And really, yeah, I already mentioned Einstein said curiosity is more important than knowledge. It is about learning, but it helps us learn and grow. It helps us really discover the world. Around. That's why it's inside of us. In the lessons, right, <laughs> electrocuting ourselves, touching the hot stove, really? That's what curiosity is about. It's how we figure things out, right? But it also helps us evolve, right? So we learn and we grow and we understand and we evolve as human beings, individually, but also collectively as a species, right? Because if you think about it, you know, in the early days, right, we were hunting with, you know, killing animals with blunt instruments, right, a rock, and hitting women over the head with a club, right? I mean, but then we said, huh, I wonder if that's how we should do things. Can we improve on these humping, humping intimates? And so are we going to get smarter? Are we going to improve on that? And then we turn around and help those behind us. And that's how we evolve as a species. But I realized that we don't get that because everyone we do it so quickly we wonder about things but we don't even realize we've forgotten that's really a sense one of our senses but all of the other senses leverage curiosity and we do it so quickly so for example when i taste something i say oh, what's that what's that flavor in there when i hear something what's that or see something taste touch what they all go it's central to the human experience but because it's so central, we miss out on its significance. But what I also realize, and what, again, a lot of us fail to realize, is yes, we're all curious, but we're not all curious about the same things or everything, right? Me, not real curious about cars. How many of you are really curious about cars? How many? We've got a couple here. Really curious about cars. How, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. How many of you buy car magazines on a regular basis. Okay, a couple hands went down. How many, car, how many of you have books on your shelves about cars? Okay, a couple went down, one went up. Okay, so we can see some people are far more curious about cars. Some people never, most people never raise their hand. How about the universe? Okay, a little more. How many, again, magazines? Nova, right? Subscriptions to things, right? Books on our shelves, right? But we don't realize, we just, because we just take it for granted, we don't realize the significance of that. But our, curio our own curiosity is on a spectrum. The fact is, for each of us, there's things we're completely disinterested in, have absolutely zero interest. But imagine if that was true for everything, that we, as human beings, we had zero curiosity, completely disinterested in everything, right? We just stand there, kind of, right? Wouldn't care about family, right? Actually, probably wouldn't have met a woman <laughs> had I not been curious. <laughs> but, but actually, we wouldn't have evolved, right? Because we wouldn't have figured anything out. We wouldn't have cared to learn, 
right? We wouldn't have figured out hunting implements, fire, the wheel. None of that would have existed had we not been curious. <coughs> Actually, we not only would not have involved, we would not have survived. Because none of us would have said, hey, wonder what's over the hill. And we never would have ventured out. Actually, we would have even gotten past that because we wouldn't have wondered why our stomach was grumbling and we wouldn't have eaten. So it's critical, not only our evolution, it's critical to our survival about, hey, what's, why is the ground rumbling and that noise? What is that? If we don't wonder what that is, we die. So realize that <laughs> while there's some things each of us are completely disinterested, it's important that we understand that's on degrees for all of us. And I believe there's a significant reason for that. Because what if we all wondered about the same thing for the, to the same degree? Pretty boring world, right? But fortunately, it's really all over the map for each of us. There's some things we're somewhat curious about and a lot of things really in between. And for some of us, again, some, many of us lost our childlike sense of wonder. So when I ask people this question all the time, what are you truly passionately curious about? I say, passionately curious? No one's ever asked me that. Passionate about things, but am I passionately curious about something? And the reason is, is because most people lost that childlike sense of wonder. And what I mean by passionate curiosity, it's something you would chase to the ends of the universe is like a quest or an expedition, something you would just love to chase down the answers to for the rest of your life. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. And there's a lot of things in between for all of us, of course. But all the greats really chase that. But it's interesting for me, and again, I realized this years ago with my own family when I was young, I have a brother that loves cars, but it just, to me it's just transportation. It just said, do I like a nice car? Sure. But do I have magazines, books? Do I read about it? No. Just, I just don't. The universe? Yeah, a little bit more. Uh, who, who read the article or saw the news about the, uh, the evidence of the wave um, just recently? That was really cool, right? But I did, so I read it, and I thought that was really cool. But I didn't then go search for other articles about it. I didn't want to learn more. I'm just not that curious about it. But I thought it was cool for sure. But I didn't go chase it down. And I have one book on my shelf about uh, you know, string theory and, and quantum mechanics. But I just, after I read it, I'm like, OK, that's cool. But it's just not my thing. And that's OK. Thankfully, other people are incredibly curious about it. And that's why we have answers to the world. Honestly, I'm more curious about food and wine. Grew up in the restaurant business. But I'm actually not curious about how it's made or how the great chefs make it or the great winemakers. I'm actually more curious about how we've used it to bring people together over the ages. I'm more curious about human behavior. So each of us are curious about different things also for different reasons. I'm actually more curious about sports, specifically Brazilian soccer. Go to Brazil usually once a year. I love it. I've been playing soccer since I saw Pele play at the age of eight. Love it. I'm actually more curious about Brazilian women, but that's me. <laughs> And it's really, it's funny, Thomas Hobbes said, curiosity is the lust of the mind, which is absolutely true. And that's what I'm looking for in people, because that's where the answers to the world come. But what I realized years ago, after not realizing, you know, years ago, what my childlike sense of wonder is, I finally did, and I, I now have really a passionate curiosity to find answers to the world, and that's where I spend my time, and that's where my life's work is. But having done this, I realized, too, that our creativity and imagination is in direct correlation to the degree of our curiosity. How could we be creative and imaginative about anything if we're completely disinterested? Right? If I'm not curious about cars, if I don't want to research cars and learn all about them, and why Ford did this, and Ferrari did that, and want to learn all about them, am I going to design a great car? Probably not. Same with fashion, or whatever it is. If I don't want to learn from all the greats, and understand why they did this, and why they did that, and, and what, God, what if we did that? It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Now, there's a difference, too, between being encouraged, like they did in school, 
to wonder about something. But if I don't naturally want to do it on my own time, on my free time, nights, weekends, right? Am I going to find answers? Am I going to be creative and imaginative? Or how creative and imaginative am I going to be if it's only in work when I hunker down and try and figure this out? Versus something I've actually done in a lot of recent studies, and you can Google it on mind wandering, that actually they've found when our mind wanders, we actually find more solutions than when we hunker down and go to work on something. And that's really the space I live in and realize that so many of us try and go to work on something and we try and be creative and imaginative, but actually in our free time, when we let our mind wander, we're actually more so. And that's really when it hit me that we're not solving problems in the world, one of the many reasons, because we're not aligning our curiosity to our work. So we're not finding creative, as many creative solutions as we could. And I realize that all creativity and imagination stems from curiosity. And that's what leads to discovery. It's really that process, curious, you know, wonder about it, you think about it, you wonder you, the what ifs, you ponder the possibilities, you think about it, and then you have epiphanies. Think about, God, what if, God, what if we could do that? And then you work on it some more, you wonder about it some more, you work on it some more, you wonder about it some more, and then you have discoveries. If you think about it, every TED Talk is that. Somebody that chased, everyone here probably watched TED Talks, okay? Every TED Talk was somebody that chased their curiosity. They wondered and they learned and they talked to people and they wondered and they learned. And even, you know, it's kind of funny, Simon Sinek's why, he was curious. But even, he, ch he was curious, what, how, why, what drives people? Right? To Sir Ken Robinson, who talks about education, he was curious, why is education broken? And he chased it, and he learned, and he wondered, he talked to teachers, and he talked to other people, and now he's sharing his discoveries with the world. And that's really what all the greats did, and other people do, that that's what leads to discovery. And we're not solving problems, we're not as creative and as imaginative, but that's what all the greats did. All of them. But they lived in that spectrum, really, where they were most naturally curious, so they're naturally far more creative and imaginative. So I started to wonder about that and realized again that that's why we're not solving problems in the world. It can, but it doesn't. I mean, I use an example all the time about, you know, a teacher. How many of your teachers, you think, in history, science, math, were truly curious about that, that in their free time, this is what they wanted to learn? That in history, your history teacher was someone that would really, on vacations even, she'd travel to Asia and want to learn about Asian history and bring that back to the classroom instead of just coming back every day and say, okay, kids, turn to chapter three. And we're going to teach you something that's been in the textbook for 50 years. Versus going and finding something new and fresh because she chased it down. That's not what happens today. I look at that in Washington. How many people in Washington are really, truly curious about forming a better union? <laughs> I don't think that's the problem. So, again, I ask people this all the time. But do you know where you're most naturally curious? Think about that spectrum. Think about things where you're completely disinterested in and think about things you just have been wondering about since you were a kid. And what I found, again, is most people aren't working in this space. Again, I use the car example all the time, not interested for me, but for those of you who raise your hand, <laughs> I wonder if you're working in the car industry. But it's funny, you may wonder about cars like Elon Musk, but actually he doesn't wonder about cars, even though he has Tesla. That's not what he wonders about. He wonders about transportation. That's very different. He wonders about the future of transportation, right? Hyperloop, right? SpaceX. So it's more than just cars that he's curious about. He wonders about how we travel. Thinking about mobility, how many of you working on mobile applications? Anyone here? Is it mobile applications you're curious about? Is it a certain 
kind of application? Or are you curious about the communication itself and the way we communicate? Or is it about why we communicate? Right? So you have to figure out why, the why behind you're doing what you're doing. What's really driving that? Is it that I want to help people spread the democracy around the world? Well, that's very different. So who should I go to work for? Well, maybe I go to work for Twitter, right? Maybe. But I don't have to be necessarily curious about that technology. It's how can I help people communicate better so I'm going to work for this company. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the focus should be about understanding how can I help people communicate better? How can I help people spread the word, right? And what are better ways to do that and then work with a product team on that? Or is it about helping small business grow? Right? Is that what you're curious about, helping small business grow? And how do you do that? Do you work for a company here like Infusionsoft in the Valley? Now, you don't have to be curious about that software. You don't have to be if you're really far more curious about helping small business grow. Okay, cool. That's great. But maybe it's not about the small business. For some of you, it may really be about the automation that you're just like fascinated by automating things for people but maybe about automating communication. Someone has to be. And clearly, uh, you know, Clayt Mask, the Mask Brothers certainly were, and that's how they created Infusionsoft. But maybe you're not curious about any of those things at all. But you need to figure out, because you're really helping solve problems, figure out where you are on this spectrum. Because what I found, again, all the greats, that's where they live. And to me, it's not that people aren't curious, although most of us lost our childlike sense of wonder. That's not the issue. It's, is it aligned with your work? I always think about um, a guy, and again, it was about 11 years when this hit me, of how many people kind of on vacations read about something else, wonder about something else. When they have a beer with a friend or they hike with a friend, they're talking about something completely different from the work when they let their mind wander. I think about a guy sitting on the beach with his family and watching the waves roll in and knock his kids down and thinking about, man, those waves are strong. And the power of waves. And thinking, looking up and down the beach all day long, people are getting thrown around by the power of these waves and looking out over the ocean and the power of those waves all day long, not just in front of me, but around the world. Think if we could harness that power. And then the tides, the way the earth spins all day long, every day. God, if we could power that. And then Monday morning, he goes back to work at his dad's insurance company. That happens all day, every day. There's a recent study, I used to tell people this because it was the old information, thankfully somebody was curious about it, is that about 20% of our thought was conscious thought and about 80% was subconscious thought. How many of you heard that? Recent study, 5% conscious thought, 95% subconscious thought. It means our mind is wandering all the time. Roughly 70,000 thoughts a day. Where's it going? That's a capacity we're not taking advantage of. And all the greats, they tried both in conscious mind because they elevated their consciousness around this. But most people, the majority of society is really not engaging their natural curiosity in the work. It's just a job. I get that. I kind of think of it as like Maslow's hierarchy of needs where some people, it's just a paycheck. It's okay. I get it. I don't have a problem with that. But where do you live? Right? Most artists kind of live up here, right? Music, song, think about new songs, dance, right? Sculpture, painting. They're always th thinking kind of creatively and that's the work they do. That makes sense. But not all. Because some are just dancing someone else's dance. Some are just singing someone else's song. So not all, right? But what about entrepreneurs? And I've been doing this, I've done a number of startups, and this is kind of where this all started after I got burnt out about 16 years ago, because I was chasing someone else's curiosity. 
I was chasing someone else's idea. I mean, again, it was exciting because I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be part of the dot com and all that, and it was fun and working with my buddies. But that was the exciting thing. But I realized I was working on someone else's thing. I didn't really care that much about it. And that's what I realized also the people that do startups, they, they, it's like a shiny new toy. Oftentimes it's something cool, but is that really where your curiosity normally lies? Now obviously you're curious about it because you wouldn't have figured this thing out, but is that naturally where it lies? It's no mistake that we're here today at Max 6 because what I found, and there have already been examples here in the short time Max 6 has been here, where someone had an idea for something. And it seemed like a really cool idea, but then he had another one, right? He's off doing the other one. Now, fortunately, the other one is where his passionate curiosity lies, but he wasted time, energy, money, other people's money to get to a certain point. And I see that all the time. And there's nothing wrong with trial and error. We all, we all do it. I've done it for many years, every day. But should you really be chasing something because it's just a shiny new cool idea and your friends say yeah you should do that that's cool ask yourself if that's really could you spend your lifetime doing that is that really what drives you and most of the employees that work for those startups wonder about something else they spend their nights weekends hiking running sitting on an airplane, sitting on the beach, under a tree, wondering about something else. So think about that for a minute, the capacity that we have. We spend so much time at work, but we're not taking advantage of our capabilities. And who's losing out? You're losing out? Our organizations are losing out? The world's losing out. Because I truly believe that we're curious for a reason and we're supposed to be creative and imaginative and bring those discoveries to the world so that we advance the human experience, so that we improve the human condition. And too many of us are just working on things because it seems cool or we can make money. And that, there's nothing wrong with making money. I think Steve Jobs, people like that are amazing because what he wondered about happened to be something that everyone wanted. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you're chasing something just because you think you can make money, oh, I do have a problem with that, and that's one reason I love working with Max 6. It's about conscious capitalism. Nothing wrong with cap capitalism. It's great. But it should be a double bottom line. It should be for some good in the world. Something. Anything. But your drive to do it shouldn't be the money. Your drive to do it would be bringing something new to the world. Oopsie. That's uh, me being in security space. <laughs> Some things never go. So to me, what I always ask people is really where is your profound and passionate And I mean profound in that it's been with you all along. That you have this curiosity for a reason. And what I help people do is find that. Find not only what they're curious about, but why. Elevate it in your consciousness and now go chase it the rest of your life. Do you know where your mind naturally likes to wander? Where does it wander off to when you're on vacation, when you're relaxed? Because mind wandering is very different from worry. Most of us spend too much time worrying. What could you help solve problems to if you tapped into that? What would you love to spend your life doing chasing down the answers? Go, think about going on a quest or an expedition like many of the greats did. What problems could you help solve? And where could you make the greatest impact as a result? That's what I want to know. Where you needed most in the world as a result of that. You know, Aristotle said, where your talent and the needs of the world cross, therein lies your vocation. I say it slightly differently, not to one-up Aristotle, but uh, where your, <laughs> um, to me it's where your gift lies, which is more than your talent. It's really, 
your, your uniqueness? What, what, what makes you unique? What do you have that other people don't have? And talent is just one aspect of who we are. Our amazing sense of wonder, our amazing curiosity is another incredible attribute that we have that we've overlooked as an attribute, and that's part of our gift. So to me, it's about figuring out where your gift is and aligning that with what the world needs from you, because I believe that's what purpose is about, by the way. Your gift is not for you, by the way. It's for us. It's for us. That's why you're here. We need what you have. And your purpose is to share that gift with the world. And fulfillment comes and only comes when you fulfill your responsibility to humanity. When you share your gift with the world. So that's what we need from you. And that's all I got.